Hey, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a 1999 Toyota Estima, also kind of known as the Previa in North America, but here, here in Japan it's called the Estima. This one here with just a hair over 100,000 kilometers, that's 104,332. Uh, the vehicle was bought from auction here in Japan for export over to the USA, and this is one of the cleanest Previas slash Estimas that I've seen in quite some time. It is quite incredible. Quick look at the odometer there, you can see the 104,000 kilometers, 104,420 at the time. Turn the engine off for the rest of it. I will say that the engine runs fine and these engines are known to run like 400,000 kilometers before they're ready to be replaced. It is a cool little van, I gotta tell you this, it's a mid-engined van. The engine is right here and then it runs a prop shaft to the front for your accessories because there's no room underneath the vehicle. The engine's a little on the small side, but it has been supercharged. So it's a supercharged 2.4 liter four cylinder. And um, they do come in four wheel drive. I just don't know if this one is a four wheel drive or a two wheel drive. So let's have a quick peek under here. This one is, let's see, drive shaft in the rear. And then the non four wheel drive is a front wheel drive one. So it'll have the drive shafts in the front as well. So, supercharged, mid-engine, four-wheel drive, minivan. Sounds like it could be a race car from the 80s, but no, minivan. And tons and tons of space inside, dual sunroof. This thing is awesome. Okay, your fluid here for your power steering is looking a little bit old. You probably want to change a number of these fluids. On a vehicle that is this old, you don't know how long everything is when the vehicle lands, and so you want to be able to take care of that. Coolant and oil looks okay. Looks like your uh, master, brake master has been uh, replaced at some point. Looks shiny new. And look at this. ABS. Cool. So let's uh, go ahead and lower the hood. Uh, by the way, this is the Aries or Air, Aras version. This is how you would pronounce it in Japanese. Aris, I guess, would be the proper pronunciation, which is the higher trim model of it. Also, this is full original. That uh, aero front bumper is the original bumper, and then it has aero side skirts and rear bumper as well. It's quite, uh, would have been quite the looker of a package in 1999. And 1999 was only seven years before I arrived here in Japan, so <laughs> we're starting to get to the point where I've almost been here for 25 years. And yes, this is importable to the USA under the 25 year rule. Okay, so let's go over the auction inspection sheet here. It's a 1999 Estima Eris, Eras. And then Octorade 4, interior B, um, 104, 332 kilometers, automatic transmission, sunroof, power steering, power windows, and airbag. I've got to quickly show you that sunroof because it's awesome. One, two. And then the full integrated roof racks. This is the era that Toyota was spending way too much money on their cars, and it shows. This is an overbuilt, the Supra of minivans, I would say. Okay, so the sales points are purchased from user, sunroof. Aftermarket Navi with TV and toll collection box for Japanese highways. Original alloy wheels are inside the car. <clears throat> yes, we can swap those on if you want. Owner's manual warranty papers come with the car. And then interior dirty and wear. It's actually incredibly clean and incredibly unworn. Okay, aftermarket wheels, the center caps are missing. Kontoda, which is what you would say in Japanese instead of English. I don't know why I said that. Uh, what else do we have? Winter tires are on it, underside, surface rust, various scratches and dents. And then it says front bumper A2, which is really not too bad. Rear bumper does have a pretty big scratch in it. And then it says there's an AU2 on the back, which I couldn't find. And an AU2 on the side, which I couldn't really find. There is a scuff right here, but I wouldn't really consider that AU2. It's more like a U, U1, A1 or something like that. I think you could probably polish that out. Okay. So let's go ahead and walk you around it. Now these come two-tone. If you look closely and you squint your eyes, it's a Panda 8.6. Take a look, it's the it's a white with the black stripe that goes across it. And uh, it isn't the same paint coat because this is a, a pearl white paint. But, uh, oh, he's gonna have to come up sharply so I'm gonna get the water out of the way from him. Okay. 
So here you can see the, the aftermarket wheels. Uh, not my faves, but uh, it did come with the original ones over there. Okay, these JDM ones have the back mirror and that makes backing up so nice, especially if, to, if you have to parallel park and you have to come close to somebody in the rear. Uh, makes it a dream to see how close you are to someone else, especially for us. Like, you probably don't know it, but we have to park these cars centimeters away from one another to fit them all in there. So, let's continue walking around and then I'll show you all of the damages. This is the dark side. The forest takes all of the light away. JDM tree, getting bigger and bigger and a little bit of an Easter egg. This might be the last season that we have this uh, these reports going on here. So post your predictions in the comments. Okay, can't shoot the whole thing because of overgrowth in one frame here. So I'm just gonna pan across so that you can see it. And this is a late model. This is, I think, the final year of the Estima in this body style. And see, that's why you got the, the front bumper looking a little bit more aggressive and clear lenses there instead of the fluted lenses. Okay, so let's look now at uh, details. I gotta say, I love the visibility inside. You feel so spacious inside here because huge windows, big A-pillar triangular windows, huge windshield, and then uh, side panels are completely straight, making it very easy to park. And it, it's not a big footprint. It's big inside, but your actual footprint is about the same size as, say, a Mark II or maybe a Lexus IS. Maybe even smaller than a Lexus IS. Okay, we're gonna look for those A2. And I wasn't the one who took the pictures, Jacob, so I don't know where our A2 on the front is. There is a little bit of a scratch there. And the bumper is discolored. And so if it were my car, I would want to get that repainted anyway. But I'm not really seeing these scratches on here. Let's see on the underside. There we go, they're down here. So gotta love when the auction is like A2 on the front bumper and then it's literally invisible unless you look underneath the car. Uh, headlights, a little bit yellowed, not too, too bad. Definitely can be brought back. Our BB's headlights were super yellow. We just got them polished. They came out looking all right. And the BB there, a newer car than this one, but doesn't have the clear lenses, not until the second generation of the BB. Looking okay there, just needs a little bit of a clean. I remember thinking, my so my aunt had one of these, a first generation Previa, and I remember looking at the windshield wipers that come out from the center and thinking, oh, wow, that's so modern. And a car like this in the late 80s looked like nothing else on the road at that time. If you are the same age as me, you probably remember. So supercharged, they did that because everyone else was coming out with V6s, but they couldn't fit a V6 into this chassis, so they decided, uh, why don't we supercharge our minivan? And I can't think of any other minivan that's supercharged other than this one. So here's the AU2 that I was talking about. You can kind of see where there's a little bit of a scuff there. And look at the blistered fenders. Very cool. And here's your A3. Now that one is super visible. And then the back bumper is uh, kind of a cool look, actually, for a minivan. A little bit more aggressive than you would expect. Here's how you spell Eris in English, if that makes sense to you. And then the back bumper has a number of loading nicks. So when you're putting something into the back, you end up getting a little bit of an ouchie in a few areas. Okay, and we will get to the interior just as soon as we're done any of the damages. Coming down this side, this is before the era of dual sliding doors, which is a little bit sucky, but uh, you can consider it classic. Yes, it's an inconvenience for my kids to get out of the car, but that's how things were back in 1999. Which, which really doesn't feel like that long ago. We were just talking, Jacob and I, before this, that like, 2018, well that sounds like two years ago. Yeah. Okay, so let's go now to the interior. The body looking clean. Like, uh, the back said AU2. I'm not seeing any AU2 across here. You can see for yourself, there's no hidden PCA damages, ever. Open this up. And you have way more space in the back than you typically get in a minivan. This is almost a meter of depth. Actually, come to look at it, it's only about 60 centimeters, but it's way bigger than in the other cars. 
And then uh, side panels here are looking good. You do have a little bit of a stain here. But this material is not torn like it usually is in the Hiasis. It's the same material as the Hiasis. So do be careful when you get the car. I don't know why the jack is just sitting there. Is that where it normally goes? No, it isn't. Where's the jack go? It's also missing the plastic covers for these. And then these seats can flip up to the sides, and they're actually a very low profile seat, and so when they flip down, like this part here flips down, then the whole thing flips to the side, it gives you more room in the back than you typically get in a lot of these minivans because the seats are usually bulkier. You also have a decent amount of like uh, leg room in the back, considering this is a non-sliding seat. This back row does not slide forward or aft. Close this up, go into the back section now. No power sliding door, because it's classic. Okay, and it looks like you get uh, non-capstan's chairs. Yes, you could get these with captain's chairs, but this one's the bench style. So it's the eight-seater instead of the seven. Okay, and you have a flip-down pillow here with cup holders. This one has a big AC unit up there and then a giant uh, sunroof. Are these seats rotational? No, they're not, but they do slide forward and back. And then a little bit of dirtiness and staining here on the carpet. Pull this up. Okay, it looks like that doesn't slide naturally when you pull it, or like the high aces will twist. This one doesn't twist. Uh, cup holder down there, kind of a comical place for a cup holder. Afterthought, maybe. They're like, we need to sell this in America, so they need cup holders. Well, let's just glue one to the wall over there. And it uh, looks like a little bit of a saggy seat from being in the folded up position for a while. And I gotta say, 1992 was all the rage with uh, seat covers. It look, kind of looks like the HKS logo, doesn't it? Close. Go see what it's like to be the driver of an Estima. And if you're a guy watching this, get a minivan. Trucks are so last generation. You need a minivan in your life. Like me. I'll put that on a shirt. Okay, power windows only on the front too. Most modern vans have more, but not necessarily. Uh, central door locking, power folding. A little bit dirty here, not too, too bad. Great impression going into this. It doesn't have any bad smells. It looks clean and nice. So if the intent is to resell this, this one doesn't need very much work. If the intent is to drive it yourself, again, you can just start going without feeling like you have to put a lot of elbow grease in the car to get it going. It's, it's like uh, just over 100,000 kilometers, but pretty much no wear on the steering wheel. Carpets are looking good. Floor pedal is good. Gauges. I guess they were going for something a little bit new and different. And then... Uh, Quite the unique looking dashboard there, I must say. And we got a Navi screen here. We have climate control AC, so set your temperature on the slider. I adore these analog climate control. Almost everything has a digital button where you go up, 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 down, down, down. But this one here, you can go from super cold to super hot in a fraction of a second if you want. I think it's really cool. This kind of thing also costs more than a digital display is to manufacture, so that's why they don't make these anymore, but there were very few cars in the late 80s, early 90s that had these slider-style climate control AC. Cup, holder, cup holders here. Ashtray here. Ashtray. And a little convenience box and a console. I believe that this console is probably a... Uh, Optional thing. Why am I zoomed in? Okay. And then a steam oil. Okay, the access panel to your engine to check your oil is inside here. You actually have to tilt back the seat. Kind of funky. But yes, look at this. It's like your pillars don't obstruct the view whatsoever. You can pop open the rear windows if you want. Cool. You know, it's funny, you don't you don't feel like uh, like a minivan is going to get you too excited, but something like this uh, really does it for me. These older school, even older than this is better. But this is getting to the point where 
nobody's driving the Estimas around anymore. So having one that's in clean, good condition like this is quite unique and cool. Anyway, that's going to be all for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.